The message I'm about to read out was not written by Blizzard, but it should be, and imagine if it were. Dear Nexus Denizens, I am going to share a story about Heroes of the Storm and sharing what is in store for this MOBA that we all so dearly love. It's time to bury the dead game memes as we unveil what we have in store for HATS and its community over the next few years. Before that, it's appropriate to share a retrospective to see how we got here. There is a game that has given rise to some of the most defining genres of our generation. Now almost 20 years old, the community for this game has used its map editor to spawn a multitude of veritable brand new game genres, such as Hero Line Wars, Tower Defense, and more. But most famously, the MOBA genre itself. With roots even before, it was truly birthed within one of our classics. I am of course talking about Warcraft 3 and the creation of Dota within it. It's time to be frank with all of you. When Dota started gaining popularity in the Warcraft 3 custom game section, we did not initially see its complete potential. The idea that Dota was destined to be more than just a really popular map, that it could be an offshoot standalone game, didn't occur to us until much later, in 2006. As we now know, we let that game slip away from us, but such is fate. Through the ashes of failure often comes a phoenix of rebirth, success and innovation. When we set out to create our own take on a MOBA, we knew we wanted to do things differently than all that had come before. We wanted to dispense with some of the mechanics that were creating a higher entry barrier, such as last hitting, individual and selfish XP gathering, and the generally fairly long length of games that would make it harder to find a committed group of 10 players to be willing to sit down and play for that period. In its place, we envisioned a hero brawler, a fun, light-hearted game that would celebrate all the Blizzard Entertainment IPs, their rich worlds, their rich and diverse cast of characters veritably steeped in compelling lore. A fantastical place of teamwork, zaniness, and yet surprising strategic depth, all with a lower entry barrier. Players would share XP with their team members, spend large parts of the game doing what is the most fun, annihilating things, completing objectives, and having action-packed, fast-paced battles. With stiff competition in the genre, we endeavored to be the accessible, fun game that celebrated all things Blizzard in one place, for people to always have a game to play with their friends and family, to relax and have fun. We started designing Blizzard Dota, or as it later came to be known, Heroes of the Storm. HATS was launched to public acclaim and enjoyment and connected hundreds of thousands of players across the world, both across Blizzard games and new audiences. Then we built the Heroes Global Championship. Meanwhile, work behind the scenes continued to change HATS in meaningful and important ways, with far-reaching gameplay changes such as the removal of ammunition, the speeding up of mounts, many XP changes, and so much more. With the HEC, we built an international route for gamers of HATS to become pro. While the HTC finally was wrapped up, we made space for third-party organizations to hold new grassroots community-oriented esports competitions, such as the CCL. During its tenure, the HTC served as a red threat and an important marketing vehicle for the game proper. We at Blizzard are preparing to start a new chapter in our game development cycles, gearing more towards mobile games. As one of our treasured classic games, we do not want to turn our back on Heroes of the Storm. In the last several years, we should have communicated more clearly with our player bases about our plans for HATS. Many players and viewers got the idea that the baby was thrown out with the bathwater. While HGC had come to an end, HATS continues to be supported with a few marquee hero releases afterwards and relatively regular balanced patches. We could have saved the, our creators, streamers and players that play the game to this day a lot of headache if they didn't constantly have to answer the question Isn't this game dead? I thought Blizzard shut this game down years ago. For this, we are sorry. We should have published some news and maintained a dialogue with the community that this game is intended to always be accessible for those that just want to come into the Nexus 
and slam a couple of dunks in an ARAM on any given Sunday. Now we are ready to share more exciting news. Recently we announced the news that we are going to be acquired by Microsoft. This is incredibly exciting for us because we will finally have the budget to realize our dreams for HOTS. With Microsoft's backing, we will possess the resources to continue dreaming up new content for heroes in a way that we know you'll love, doing things that we couldn't before. Now for some exciting news. Our internal telemetrics highlight that virtually nobody is buying loot chests. We also personally identify more with the previous initial monetization model of choosing which heroes to buy, which skins and which mounts to invest in as you choose your favorite in-game look. With either in-game hard-earned currency or with a few dollars, you dress to impress in the Nexus. We want to keep the feeling of earning skins now and then via actively playing in a way that loot chest earning has felt while also offering a return to the system that most of you preferred, where we offered heroes and skins in both bundles and separately. To reflect the later stage of the game's lifespan, we're announcing that we're going to be changing the price of every current and future hero to $1. Should you wish to decorate your in-game look further, or you're looking for ways to support the game, the rest can be spent on skins and the like. Finally, and most excitingly, we're going to be commissioning the creation of 11 more heroes to reach a perfect 100 heroes in our roster. These 11 will be carefully picked to represent the most important and iconic heroes from all of our IPs. I have been allowed to spoil three. Bale from the Diablo universe, Kill Jaden from the Warcraft universe, and the Overmind from Starcraft. The creation of these, along with the advertisement and marketing that we're going to be doing around the release of these and more updates, the game should experience a lovely increased set of attention and a huge signal boost to everyone out there that Heroes of the Storm is and will always be alive and kicking. So tell your friends and get together for a brawl of epic proportions. The first hero is going to be dropping in two weeks from now on April 1st. Also, we are finally looking at removing Mule from Abathur. Sorry for the delay, lol. Until then, we will see you in the Nexus. Signed, Blizzard.